Okay, our next speaker is uh, is Peter Dodge. Um, he is Meridian's uh, Retail Business Solutions Manager. Peter's been working in the electricity industry for almost 40 years. He joined, <coughs> excuse me, he joined Meridian in 2003. He's gone into a new role, which is uh, Business Solutions Manager. In this role, he's responsible for developing new value-adding initiatives for our customers, and particularly focused at the moment on distributed generation, um, looking at micro, hydro, solar, photo, photovoltaic, and mini uh, wind turbine systems. Pete's regarded as a bit of a legend in Meridian, uh, and I have heard it said on more than one occasion that there's nothing that Pete doesn't know about the electricity market. And I know, being reasonably recent to the company, I've relied on Pete's knowledge uh, countless times, so he really is an expert. Uh, Pete's speaking today about small-scale renewable generation, specifically how it's relevant to businesses, what are the benefits, and why do it. Uh, what are your options for including it as part of your energy strategy, and how much will it cost? Please can you welcome Peter Deutsch. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, my presentation is, is wonderfully brief, so that's good. And I'm hoping to evoke some questions and some thinking. And while all of you here today are representing your businesses, you all live somewhere as well. So I'm going to be talking about uh, small-scale renewables, not only for your business, but also for your home. A couple of things about uh, photovoltaics, which is really what my address is about today. Uh, of all the renewable schemes that Meridian is contracted for ex import-export, very few are wind, only a handful, probably less than 10. And for hydro, while we're getting inquiries all the time, usually around the Kaimais area, through Tauranga, maybe some of the uh, South Island sites, hydro is really hard to do. It's usually low cost, or so, sorry, uh, low output machines, high cost, and can't get the juice out to the network. So it comes down to photovoltaics. Now PV systems operate on solar light. They do not work on solar heat. And the reason for that is that solar PV is actually overtaking solar hot water in its ability to deliver uh, energy that is more useful than just hot water. So there is no wastage with solar PV if you have it on your, um, on your home, for example, and you want to export the surplus, which might be on the weekends, uh, when, when you're not using the electricity, then Meridian will buy every kilowatt hour that you can produce or export to the market. And at what cost, you say, or what price? Well, we are now moving towards more of a, uh, a market sustainable model, and so those prices are getting to reflect more the average wholesale market price. For Meridian, it's not really a, a money-making exercise, but as Paul has mentioned, and also Mike Rowan, it's in the DNA of Meridian with sustainable products and sustainable generation. So how, how good is this stuff? Well, it's okay, but it's not a silver bullet. It's just one of a suite of things that a person or an industry would use in attaining energy efficiency and reducing costs. And yet we see worldwide there are some uh, huge schemes around. So. We've got powering cities, huge arrays of uh, photovoltaic um, panels. Each panel is about 1.5 metres in height, about 800 millimetres wide, and about 300 or 30 millimetres deep. In business, it's really good because most roofs are flat, and so PV can be angled towards the sun, which is about 35, 30, 35 degrees in New Zealand, facing due north. If you've got a lot of south facing, facing, then PV is not for you. So we have to attract sunlight, not heat. The downside for businesses, it seems, because uh, residential photovoltaic systems have absolutely taken off. If you, if you think that, oh, it's just not going to happen, it really is happening, which is why I'm working full time to get Meridian's processes, its metering, its reconciliation, its terms and conditions, uh, our billing, the whole thing is really complex. It's a whole new business and it's growing exceptionally fast. But what happens in the, the SME or small medium enterprise, often you don't own the building. You rent it from a landlord. 
And then you think, well, if I put PV on the roof and I want it to run for 25 years, which is what it will do, will I be in these premises? Will I have downsized? Will I have moved somewhere else? What happens with the PV? I don't want the landlord getting it. The landlord, on the other hand, might say, well, I don't know how long you're going to be here. The footprint of the next people coming through might not be the same. I've got no reason to put it up there. I only want to run a few exit lights and the odd uh, piece of air conditioning equipment. So I'm not going to do it. So we haven't actually seen much in the way of movement with photovoltaic systems in the small, medium enterprise, or even in large corporates either, at this point. The biggest uh, wind, uh, solar farm, if you can use that term, in New Zealand is at um, South Auckland, at Ramarama, and they've got about 360 panels there. It does uh, 60 odd kilowatts. I should look at my notes, shouldn't I? And about 70% of their total consumption is by PV. Now, the panels were originally to go on the buildings, and so it came as quite some surprise to me when I went up there and found that it was in the paddock. And the, the owners of SAFE found that to be a good solution. Those paddocks are essentially unused except for running sheep, and the lower frames of the PV system is just above sheep head height. So they can go right through there, and they do, and nibble on the grass right the way, and it's, it's just a perfect use of the land. And there was no resource management, they had no uh, building consents to do because nobody lived in it. It was just that they were surprised at how easy it was to put in such uh, an arrangement. The next one is where many of you will be interested is in, in powering um, photovoltaic panels on your home to reduce your input electricity costs. And that's what really is driving and motivating a lot of homeowners to go for PV systems. So they're wanting to avoid the ever increasing costs of uh, retail electricity coming into their home, which can be between, say, Auckland around the 20, 21 cents a kilowatt hour to over in Westport and some tariffs at 40 cents a kilowatt hour. And we've heard that prices always go up. That's um, pretty well a given. And so to be able to hedge against those seems to be a good idea. And so many householders are going that way. And in fact, with the amount of potential in New Zealand, we're going to see probably hundreds of thousands of homes that will have PV in some form or another. This one illustrates what PV can do for a residential customer. Now you'll notice the little red at the bottom, the red bars at the bottom, is the output from the PV and overcoming the load in a home. The downside with residential is that the two peaks in the day are generally in the morning when we all get up and fire the toaster on, and then we get a home at night, and heaters go on, or the heat pump, uh, audio goes on, maybe the TVs, uh, a lot of usage at night where PV does not work. So as I say, it's not a silver bullet, it's only one of a suite of, of energy conservation uh, areas you'd go for. So then the, the first question I always get asked is, now what's the payback? You can't think in terms of payback with PV. Because one of the um, uh, greatest energy efficiency measures you can take is to put double glazing in. And many people do that. It's excellent for reducing noise, for reducing the loss of heat out of your home. And if I asked you what the payback was on on uh, doing the windows that way with double glazing, you would say, oh, I don't oh, know, I'm not, not doing it for that, you've got it wrong, I'm doing it for the comfort of my home. Well, you have to say the same thing about PV. Now, a few years ago, with the cost of photovoltaic panels, it would almost take you 20, 25 years to get a payback, if you want. And if we're going to use that term, which I don't think is very really applicable, we're probably down around the eight to nine years on payback. But the savings are quite great. Even so. The second graph is one where the PV that's been installed is quite a bit larger, and you'll see the export capability there. And you'll notice that the peaks in the morning and the night are still happening, and they go unabated. So those need to be clobbered by such technologies as LED lighting, which uh, our uh, man from Philips is going to talk about after me, and with double glazing insulation star rated appliances, that kind of uh, view. So now we're starting to look at some of the larger PV farms in the world. 
So 8.2 megawatts, 27,000 modules, quite significant. And in uh, Europe, particularly Germany, and in England, then coming over to Australia, there have been huge subsidies available for people to buy and install PV and feed in tariffs three times the retail price. And it has got those countries absolutely into trouble. And in the case of uh, through Queensland, in Australia, they have actually pulled back on the feed-in tariffs and they are actively, True Energy being one of them was mentioned in the news, uh, actively fighting against um, photovoltaics being added to the system. So you can overdo it, it's like anything. When it's balanced, it'll be fine. If you overdo it, and subsidies is the way to overdo it, then we have these anomalies where there's more power being produced on a subdivision than coming into it, and the network company has to look at protection on its transformers uh, going the export way rather than just on import. And of course the more electricity that is uh, avoided by consumers, the variable line charge, which is not going to the network company, is starting to tip those pointy-headed people into the afterlife as well, because they're not going to get the amount of money that they want for their assets. So just steady as you go is probably the best for New Zealand. Another large scheme, nearly four megawatts rooftop, three megawatts World Expo in China where many of the panels are produced, Sydney Theatre. And then we've got an interesting by PV home and this is where the walls, our exterior walls and roof have been made out of PV. And so that home is actually producing a lot of electricity and much of it will be exported. You see the balustrading around the outside with the glass that's in that, that also now you can get glass with PV mounted on it. So if you've got north-facing windows in your offices or your factory, uh, they can be converted into PV, um, and they're not, not, not heaps of wires all hanging down. It's actually uh, very discreet. So an Australian manufacturer of uh, PV panels has come up with uh, their view of what's happening with the, the customers they've sold PV <coughs> to. Uh, five million megawatt hours of renewable energy per annum. Two and a half million tonnes of CO2 has been offset. It's the equivalent of taking a million cars off the road and equivalent to planting 30 million trees. That's just from one company selling PV products. Right, we're going to have a look now at some of the characteristics of a PV panel. You're familiar with the, with the standard panels and they're about 185 watt output. They're getting those up now to 205 as, as they're going to be as a standard model. The efficiency is about 15%, so it's not great, conversion of light into electricity. But uh, recent discoveries have shown that by putting a layer of silicon over the photovoltaic uh, material, followed by the glass, 3.2 millimeter glass encapsulation, that it attracts more light onto the photovoltaic parts of the uh, of the structure, and they're getting up the order of 26% efficiency, and that is stunning. The Israelis have just produced a system that is by PV, so there's PV on both sides of the panel, you think, well, how does the sun get under it? And they're using acrylic mirrors to fire up underneath the panel and to increase the output, not 100%, but certainly it has uh, massively improved the output for the footprint that PV is uh, installed across. What does it cost? When I did this um, model, which actually comes from one of the uh, Australian producers and installers, and they take a look at, well, how many watts are you going to buy? So this example shows the modules of 3,000 watts at $1.55 a panel. It comes on down through, and we work out, well, down the bottom I've put a 25% markup for the installer, which is not bad. Anybody getting 25% on their money? Go and install PV. The amount of sunlight hours is usually between three and four hours average per day. You think, hang on, the sun's shining more than that. But we're talking about the full output of the modules. is only about four hours a day on average times 365. Down the bottom, over 25 year life of PV, and remember that there's nothing to do with PV, it doesn't have to have bearing changes, nothing, it just sits there and operates. Then it will overcome retail prices of 20.85 cents per kilowatt hour. And there are not many retail tariffs that are below that. 
I redid the model just before coming here, and with the price of uh, PV panels having dropped so much, and then I went and put 30% on the installer, because I'm going to go installing them next week. Uh, we've got it down now to 17 cents. So now we're starting to win. There is a global glut in panels, and New Zealand is seen as a prime place to sell them due to the slowdown in, in other continents. So now's not a bad time to think about it. If you've got a, um, a spare 10 or 12,000, which I know you have, sitting in your back pocket, <coughs> you can actually get a return on that investment if you listen to the safe boys, which is about 9%, but 6% is uh, conservative. Which bank are you with that's giving you 6% on your savings? Or more? So back earlier in the year, the New Zealand Herald made uh, some reports on PV, and they said that um, the panels had dropped by 50%. They've actually dropped by 70% yeah, now. Yes. So it's quite significant. They say that there'll be a 15% year on year in solar panel installations. Looking at what's been happening in the last couple of months, um, small companies starting up installing PV have mushroomed. And it isn't a day goes by now when I haven't got an inquiry from Joe Bloggs and Staller wanting to partner up with Meridian to put uh, PV panels in place. So 2020 is the estimated year the price of solar generated electricity will equal the retail so price. That's far too distant. It's going to be a lot less than 2020. The amount of panels that are produced are primarily out of uh, China. Uh, Korea's coming right in behind them with um, LG and Hyundai. Very good, very efficient modules. Uh, and they're also um, American and European providers and producers. So there is a lot of competition out there for the sale of panels, very competitive prices by the installers. It's, uh, that's working quite well. And I put one in here for the sake of uh, our friends from Fonterra on biodigesters because that is going to be the next thing that will come through. Uh, not so much perhaps for you folk here, but certainly in the dairy industry, biodigestion for effluent uh, will allow more herd to be put on grasslands and uh, good results from the biodigesters. Now in the past, in past years, in, uh, in, in the Netherlands and other parts of Ger uh, Germany and other parts of the world, once again, the governments have had to massively subsidise these, these uh, generator, generating plants. But in more recent times, I'm told in several countries, they will now stand on their own. So like everything, as technology moves ahead, prices do come down. In the last slide, talk to us. We're really getting set up for PV. We don't know it all yet. We've come across some huge hurdles. But the things that Meridian is doing, uh, particularly in the billing space, uh, particularly in advice, our, our easy terms, when I look at our competitors, the terms and conditions they've got, we are much lighter. We will take any amount of electricity, some are limiting it to 10 kilowatts, an output of 10 kilowatts, we will take whatever you've got, but it does come down to the price that we will, that we will pay for it. So if you want to talk to us about that, or another thing I should say, we'll, we'll um, be generating buyer-created tax invoices. And we believe that'll be a, a, a first to be automated in New Zealand. So we're on the way, and we'd love to hear your, your comments and views on it. So I'll be here for a little bit after the session today, and if you want to make uh, contact, I've got a business card I can give you. Delighted to come and talk to you about uh, such um, added value products for your business. Uh, it's been great to be able to talk with you. Thanks, Paul.